Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Anna Lee, also known as Wool and Buggers, and I'm a crochet artist and pattern designer based in Lund in Sweden. This is my first ever YouTube video, and today we're going to be ranking everything that I crocheted in 2023, which I thought would be like a good starting point for this channel. Uh, and I filmed all of that content already, so if it looks like it's different days, it's because it is. Uh, I forgot to film an intro, so bear with me. <laughs> uh, and I also forgot to do like an introduction to the tiers that I'm using in this video. So we're going to start with that and we're going to go through the tier list together. So on the bottom, we have Nope, and that's for all the projects that for some reason are a no for me. Then we have wearable, which I put pretty down low because I wear most of my crochet. So something that's wearable is wearable, but it's nothing special. And then we have silly and cute for all of my silly and cute projects. And then we have it's even office wear. And that's sort of a marker of wearability for me because I'm usually either at home or I'm at the office. So if I can wear something to the office without getting judged, that's awesome. <laughs> and then we have this is a sleigh on the top, which is for my most iconic projects only, so hopefully not too many, or that category won't mean anything. Um, and yeah, let's get started! I'm gonna start off with this cute little crop top called the Asymmetrical Lease Top. Uh, that was a pattern test for Franz Crochets. And I finished this in January, which was <laughs> totally the wrong season to make a project like this. But I just love the design. Uh, it worked out really quickly, I remember. And I used eight for cotton yarns, double threaded. And I think the color situation and the phrase on the bottom are super cute. I got that idea from uh, Make NA Your GF on Instagram. She's really cool. I love all of her projects and she does a lot of double threading. And then on the side, I added a couple of ribbons, which was both functional and also aesthetic. I really like this top, but I don't wear it that much. It's a fun summer top, but it's also like summer for two weeks in Sweden. So I'm gonna put this in wearable. My second project that I finished was this board game sweater, which I actually love. This took so freaking long. It's a graphic of a Terra Mystica board game night with uh, my fiance and one of our closest friends. I uh, was experimenting with the half double crochet stitch in different ways, trying to see if I could make, um, if I could color change within the stitches. And I was like, oh my God, I'm innovating. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there's a name for this, but I don't know what it is. My initial idea was to make a vest, so I wanted to make a lot of my vests are like um, continuous, so they have a front panel and then the front panel continues on the back. But then somewhere along the way, I guess, I changed my mind. I wanted to make it a sweater and add sleeves. So the sleeve is like in the middle of the graphic, um, which is not the best, but it works. So I'm gonna rank this as it's even office wear because I actually do wear this in the office. It's one of my like less silly graphics. Moving on, we have this Heart Me card holder by I Am Lanka, uh, which was a pattern test as well that I finished. It was uh, coming out on Valentine's Day, I think. So it's this cute heart design. I finished it in the end of January. I use this as my wallet. So in that sense, it's very wearable. Like I do use this all the time. I'm gonna put this in, it's even office wear because obviously I carry it around everywhere. So that feels fair. Next project is Fake Knit Beanie by Mermaid's Yarns. Another pattern test. This honestly is like the perfect beanie pattern, but it's a little too small for me. Magdalena is uh, an amazing designer. I got one of her other patterns after doing this pattern test and they're so intricate and so detailed and there's a lot of mass to make uh, all the measurements perfect. And for me, that was something that I wasn't used to at all. I used to freehand a lot of my crochet. Um, I don't wear a lot of form-fitting clothing. Doing all the measurement stuff and, you know, making gauge swatches and that kind of stuff that you should do, but that I'm bad at doing or used to be bad at doing made me have to redo this beanie like 500 times <laughs> for that reason 
sadly, it's going to be a nope. And that has nothing to do with the pattern. That's just me being bad at sort of following uh, very detailed instructions. <laughs> now for one of my own patterns, the first one that I made myself and designed myself this year, it's the Skater Boy sweater. Um, I love this sweater. I'm gonna put it in. This is a sleigh immediately because um, I do love it that much. I can't even remember how I came up with this design. I think Alex was in this period where he was imagining animals doing uh, human stuff. So he had like a drawing of a bear making soup. Um, he had a drawing of a crane dancing, a frog ice skating, that sort of stuff. And uh, hearing his thoughts and seeing his drawings sort of made me um, start to think <laughs> about this as well. I really like pigeons. I think pigeons are freaking cool. They're not scared to get close, which I like because I love birds. <laughs> I was thinking that, you know, pigeons are urban. What's more urban than a skateboard? And then I came up with this skater boy pigeon idea. And then of course, you know, I used to listen a lot to Ever Lavinge when I was younger. Uh, so I had to put the lyrics on the back. And then on the sleeves, I added these black and white checkers and I think that was a really good decision. This is another sweater that I actually do wear a lot. And another thing that I'm really happy about is the length of this sweater. It's like cropped at the perfect length where I can wear it at the office because most of my high waist jeans, um, you know, meet the sweater. But I can also layer it over dresses without it looking weird. And I'm kind of short, so when I have a long sweater over like a skirt or um, a dress, it looks weird. So I'm happy about that. But that's a sleigh. And that was part of my City Critters bundle. And the other part of that bundle is the Girl Boss Vest, which was um, the second design that I did uh, following the Skater Boy sweater. And that was also, you know, inspired by Alex and his animal creation. And for some reason, my Instagram algorithm actually gives me quite a lot of raccoons in my feed because uh, I think they're cute, I guess. I thought it was funny because they're trash pandas, but they're also these cute pets, or could be these cute pets that, you know, float around on Instagram and eat berries. The juxtaposition of that, you know, being very trashy, but also very cute, just made me think girl boss. That's such a girl boss move of raccoon. So I made this girl boss sweater, girl boss sweater vest, uh, which is a raccoon wearing heart eye glasses. And then on the back, it says Gaslight Gatekeep Girl Boss, which obviously is a meme. Um, I don't think you should gaslight anyone or yourself. And I, don't, and I hate when people gatekeep stuff. And for that reason, because I work mostly with boomers, I don't actually wear it out that much. And if I wear this at the office, people are not going to understand that I'm being ironic. So people are going to be like, oh, like, what do you mean? Or, oh, does she think she's a girl boss? That's a little obnoxious. So... Uh, I'm gonna put this in silly and cute <laughs> for that reason. In April, now we're in April, I made uh, another Blossoming Luna top. This was around the time that I was releasing the pattern or testing the pattern for the Blossoming Luna. And I made my first Blossoming Luna top in 2022. It was gonna start off as hexagons. I realized halfway that I made all my hexagons into pentagons. And I was like, Oh no, because <laughs> pentagons are kind of an annoying shape. So unlike squares or triangles or hexagons, you can't really add an infinite number of hex uh, pentagons together that in a way that gives no gaps or overlaps. But then I also had all of these, you know, pentagons lying around and I was like, I'm not gonna, you know, frog all of these. I just started playing around with arranging them and uh, ended up with this top that was reversible, that I liked a lot, and that I realized other people liked a lot too, but didn't dare write me the pattern for it because I was really scared, you know, I'm pretty flat chested, and I was like, if people have bigger boobs, they're not be able to wear this top without their little boobs, you know, just hanging out. And so it took me a whole year to like figure out how to write the pattern for it. I'm so, so happy, like this is one of my proudest patterns, even though it's pretty unconventional in the way that it's um, written but I had such an amazing pattern tester group like my testers all of my testers for all of my patterns are amazing but the different tops that came out of this tester group were really inspiring 
I don't know, I think it was just so cool seeing how everyone sort of used their creativity and their own body to make these amazing creations. Um, so I'm gonna put this in... I'm gonna put it in Silly and Cute. No, I'm gonna put it in This Is A Slay. I do love this top and I do think for the tester group and the tops that create, came out of that pattern test, uh, This Is A Slay. Next, in April, I also made this Habakat top by Crafty Icha. It was a pattern test. I think the spiral is super cool. I actually made two of these. I made an orange one and then I made a pink one. I definitely wear the orange one more. I have a hard time styling this top because the front is very cool and easy to style, but then the back is pretty low. And so if I'm wearing like a sports bra, it will be the sports bra strap and then the back will be underneath, which looks a little weird, I think, but cool shirt, very cool design. I'm gonna put it in wearable. Next up is the Scorpion Vest by Ty Bailey, which was also a pattern test. And I made this vest for my fiance and then I think uh, I'm the one, you know, who end up wearing it a lot. Um, so actually I do wear this vest quite a lot and I do wear it a lot at the office. Tan and the white work really well, obviously, but then the patches of orange, um, I think just make it a little bit more fun and a little bit more me. So I'm gonna put this in It's Even Office Wear because I do wear it a lot at the office. This is like my go-to vest when I'm like, want to be sort of neutral because the front is so neutral, like the checkered front is pretty neutral, but also a little bit fun, but not too fun, you know? So it's even office wear. Next up is the Olivia dress that <laughs> was also a pattern test for uh, Nick Crochet Diary .pa. I love this dress. I've made two other dresses and I think this one like fit and wearability wise is definitely the one. When I was at the skirt part, I would just bring it to meetings and crochet during meetings and it worked out really fast or a lot faster than I thought. And I took these cute photos or Alex helped me take these cute photos of me frolicking around with Luna in this dress. Just makes me feel like a princess to be honest. Like it's so, like the original design has like puffy uh, frills on the sleeves and around the neck as well. And I actually skipped that because um, I I knew I would get more wear if the sleeves were simpler, if it was a little bit more simple overall. And so it's just blue and white, like Cinderella, but still a little bit of the puff sleeve. And I love the frills at the bottom of the skirt. The only downside with this dress, or the only thing that I'm really sad about, and that I should have been better because it has nothing to do with Nicole or the pattern, I should have known or tested the material to see how much it stretched. I wore it out for the photo shoot and then I wore it to our company summer party. I brought a three millimeter hook to the party because I knew that it would stretch. And so in the middle of the party, I was like in the bathroom, you know, slip stitching together the sleeves to the top so that my boobs wouldn't be hanging out. <laughs> I should wash it, I guess, so that it shrinks again. I'm gonna put this in, it's even office wear because I wore it to the office party. Uh, and I think, Honestly, my favorite crochet dress that I've made so far. Okay, now we're in summer and in June. And the next one is the fruity bag. That was a pattern test for Nastia Crochet. I thought this was a genius design. I like all of Nastia's designs. They're all pretty simple, but very cute and very usable. And the fruity bag is just, I actually have it here. I made two because my mom really likes them. So I'm gonna, give them to her for Christmas. I used to throw this in my backpack and it was great if I like ended up like going to the grocery store for some reason because my backpack is usually always pretty packed with like my computer and my work stuff and so having an extra bag is always great. Um, only downside I would say is that it's a little thick like it's a little bulky you know I have a bagu as well and the bagu is like so flat and tiny that I can put it in my pocket and I can't really put this in my pocket but I guess this is a lot cuter so ups and downs. I'm gonna put this in oh my god this is so hard because like it's obviously wearable it's even office wear yeah but that feels a little too high like I, I like this design but it's not it doesn't really pass the silly and cute stage for me and then I have I think my most popular design this year the milk tea button up and 
I finished this in July and I think I started it in like May. During spring I was like in this period of self-doubt, I was feeling really stressed, which I think is why I was doing a lot of pattern tests. Like I wasn't very, I wasn't feeling very creative. So I was like, I'm gonna make granny squares because I've never actually made a granny square pattern or a design and it feels nice, you know, completing something. This is the first one of my reels that reached 1 million views, which was so cool. It sort of blows my mind. And that's um, one of the reasons that my account grew so much this year. So I owe a lot <laughs> to this design. It's one of my most popular patterns. It's uh, very wearable, it takes a lot of work though. But I do think it's a really cute layering piece, especially if you're like going to the beach or uh, in the summer, you just wear it over a bralette or a crop top. So I'm gonna put it in This Is A Slay. Next up, we have the Fernie Lingerie. That was a pattern test for uh, Jess Root Knots. I finished this while Alex and I were up at his summer house in the north of Sweden. It's just a perfect little project to bring with me, which was a little bit awkward because his grandma was also there and she's like 90 and she was like, oh, what are you crocheting? I was like, a bikini bottom. <laughs> I'm just scared to say it was lingerie. Sadly, I don't use these uh, lingerie bottoms that much. It's like I haven't lined them yet, so I don't know if I'm gonna make more crochet lingerie. Like I don't think that's my thing, so I'm gonna put it in nope. Sadly. And then we have the girls love techno a ransom tote, which was a test for Eden Wells crochet. I love Aiden's graph work. I think she's one of the best tapestry crochet designers on Instagram at the moment. Um, they're all really fun and these ransom letters are no exception. I chose Girls Love Techno and that's because I go to a lot of techno clubs in the summer and I always feel like the techno scene is so gatekept by men. And I don't know that much of techno, like I can't really distinguish between different genres of techno and I always feel a little bit embarrassed or a little bit scared to ask like it feels like it's such a deep cut sector of music to be honest I use the measurements of a current bag that I have that I use a lot so it's not the same bag that's actually in the pattern and because I've changed the shape it was also so hard to line because I'm not good at sewing I don't really know what I was doing and it just sucked and for that reason I don't wear it as much as I should. But I'm gonna put it in silly and cute because I do think it's very cute. Uh, I just wish I wore it more. My phone died, so this is day two of filming. We're actually smack in the middle of summer right now, which means we're halfway through all of my makes for 2023. The project I'm gonna show you next is the Classic Bikini by Earth by Morgue which is very much what it says to be. It's very much a classic bikini. It's a triangle top, and then it's a regular bikini bottom with a side tie feature. And this was the only project that I brought with me for my summer holidays going abroad. Uh, we were busing around Europe and I brought pink, blue, and orange yarn and put them together in this striped bikini. And I actually really like this color combination. I don't see it very much, uh, but I think it works really well. And I ended up finishing this halfway through uh, not actually when we were at, you know, the ocean. I was still crocheting while we were at the ocean. But I did manage to finish it at our last stop, which was in Budapest, where we went to a lot of spas in the city. So I did wear this to Gellert, um, and it was fine. Uh, it's a cotton bikini, so it didn't dry very quickly, but the fit overall worked pretty well. So I'd say it's definitely wearable, but if I were to make this pattern again, I think I would use a different fiber and also maybe use elastics. And it did get a little bit bulky in my crotch. And I don't think that's necessarily the pattern's fault. I think, you know, I should have been better at uh, measuring it whenever I have to make something that's very made to measure or skin tight. It's usually my own fault that it doesn't turn out very well. But I do think this bikini is very cute and I do like the colors and I do think it's wearable, especially if you're like tanning or um, just lounging on the beach. So that's where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it in wearable. The next project I brought with me finished on my summer holidays and that was the Hugel sweater. And that's something that I worked pretty intensely on right before we left because it was for my friend Hugh who we were traveling with. 
you and I have been friends in high school but he's from Hong Kong and then moved to the US and recently just moved to New York and he wanted a thick wool sweater for New York winter and so that's what he got smack in the middle of summer uh, and that's also why this video is kind of funny because we're actually in Budapest um, where when this was taken and it was really hot and he had to wear this thick wool sweater just so I could get content so thank you Hugh for doing that for me uh, and the idea behind the sweater is a mixture of both of our ideas so I asked him what he wanted and he said I want a slice of lime because you know what happens when life gives you lemons but what about when life gives you limes uh, which is a very huge thing to say and while he had been thinking about what he wanted me to make I had been thinking about what I wanted to make him and for me I wanted to sort of encapsulate his persona in an animal because I do a lot of animal patterns and he was one of my smartest friends but he's also kind of talkative he can be a little bit obnoxious sorry Hugh um, <laughs> and I just thought the seagull totally encapsulated all of that uh, seagulls are actually super smart but they're also very ratchet and they're a little cocky, which sort of sums Hugh up. Uh, so that's what I wanted to make. And then I didn't want to dismiss this idea entirely, so I fused the two of them. So now it's a seagull eating a slice of lime. It has the limes on the sleeve, and then on the back, um, it's a seagull sipping, sipping a mojito. So it still has this, you know, when life gives you lemons, you make a lemonade. When life gives you limes, you make a mojito. <laughs> so that's where that comes from. I actually don't have this sweater uh, since Hugh has it. I hope he wears it a lot. Uh, I can't really market it in the way that I want to. I think this is my best sweater pattern, to be honest. It's very detailed, it's made to measure. It teaches you like how to taper the sleeves, how to place the graph, how to calculate your yardage, all of that stuff. Um, so would we'll definitely recommend checking it out if you're interested. Obviously, one of those makes that's silly and cute. Now we're transitioning into fall. I just got him back from my summer holidays, back straight into work, uh, was feeling kind of low on my creative juices. So I bought a pattern from Ed's Fart that I've been seeing everywhere on Instagram, which is the Coliseum Crop. It's actually the one I'm wearing right now, but I started off making a short sleeve version in watermelon colors. So pink and uh, green and white. And I freaking love this top. I love this pattern too. Uh, the pattern is, I think, one of my favorite patterns that I've ever bought. It's super easy, works up really quickly, and it's really easy to customize and sort of make your own. So I started out with the short sleeve, uh, wear that one a bunch. It was perfect for a summer to fall transition because I made it in wool blends, uh, mohair. Uh, so it's actually quite warm, but it's still a short sleeve. So having that warmth, but still, you know, wearing a short sleeve was perfect for like September. Definitely a sleigh. I wear this t-shirt a lot, actually. And then after I made the short sleeve version, I like this pattern so much that I made a long sleeve version and that's the one I'm actually wearing. And I made this using an acrylic cake yarn, um, made the sleeves long and flared, and then I made a turtleneck version, which is just, I made a longer neck ribbing and then just folded it over. Um, and because I was using a cake yarn, uh, which, you know, gives all of this variation without having to actually carry around a bunch of yarns. I could just carry this project around with me everywhere. So I would bring this to work, uh, sit in meetings while I was, you know, listening, listening and just crochet. And I managed to finish a whole sleeve during a two hour meeting, you know, while actively sort of participating and listening. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool, which means I ended up finishing the sweater in like a day or two which I think is pretty fast for a sweater. And I made the sweater because I needed more neutral toned sweaters for fall. And that was because I wanted to wear more of my crochet work to, to work, but uh, can't necessarily just wear my silly sweaters all the time. So I needed something a little bit more neutral, a little bit more classy. Um, this was perfect for that. So it's even office wear, obviously, because I made it sort of for that purpose. Next up is the sweater that I was wearing yesterday when I was filming the first part of this video, which is the bean sweater, which is based on the bean tapestry that I have also released as a pattern. This is my favorite make of 2023. I'm immediately gonna put it in. This is a sleigh. I love this sweater so much. Uh, it's a graphic of Luna, who is our dog. <laughs> she was sleeping. 
Oh, she's a little tired, but this is Luna. She's our English setter. Uh, she's two years old and <laughs> we adopted her from Greece. And I'd always wanted to make a pattern of Luna that just never had. And then Alex and I had also just filmed an outfit video, which was like a matching crochet outfits video. Uh, and I realized when making that video that Alex does not have enough crochet outfits. Like he doesn't have enough crochet to make an entire video. So I was like, I need to make him more sweaters. I also want to make the pattern of Luna. Decided to combine the two and came up with the bean sweater. And this was also, <laughs> oh, she's so sleepy. She doesn't want to sit in my lap like this usually for that long. But this was an opportunity for me to also experiment with uh, making layers in crochet or sort of translating the idea you know when you're working with graphic design you're usually working in different layers and in crochet in most of my crochet work I don't really have that so if you look at the Hugo sweater it's just one seagull if you look at the skaterboard sweater it's the same uh, and so here I wanted to play around you know more with framing with layers and bringing that sort of mindset into crochet or translating that mindset into crochet and I think it turned out really, really well. Uh, it's obviously a sweater that holds a lot of sentimental value to me because it's a sweater of Luna, who I love a lot, right? My little baby. Uh, but I also just think it looks really good. So, oh, now you want to get down, okay. On the back, I put all of Luna's favorite things. So it's her favorite soft animal that she's had ever since she was a puppy. It's a tennis ball. She loves all kinds of ball and then it's a stick. And chewing on sticks is like her favorite pastime. And I initially, as I said before, wanted to make this sweater for Alex. I did make it for Alex so Alex can wear it. But as with most of my crochet work that I make for him, I end up wearing it more just because I have more opportunities to do so. He bikes like 25k to work every day and gets sweaty so he can't really bring a lot of heavy sweaters with him. So I end up wearing this sweater a lot uh, and I love it so much. So yeah, that's a sleigh. Next up, I have my Halloween costume of this year, which is Ratatouille. It's Colette and Remy from Ratatouille. Uh, so I was Colette, obviously, and I made a little Remy. <laughs> and I uh, found this rat pattern on uh, YouTube. It's by Complicated Knots. I'll link it down below. It was really easy to make. Then I added hair clips to his hands with super glue and glued him onto a plastic headband thing. I don't know what these are called in English. And I wore like a white button up and a little apron. And I made the rat hold on to my curtain bangs, which was freaking perfect. Look at that. Oh my God, I am obsessed with this little rat. And it was a great Halloween costume. So very happy with this. I'd seen something similar on Instagram Reels and I just knew I had to recreate it. So obviously, this is a very silly and a very cute make. So I'm going to put it in silly and cute. Moving on, now we have two projects left. Um, so we're almost at the end. And the first one is the Acorn Beret by Nastya Crochets, which was also a pattern test that I did for Nastya. I've always wanted a beret. I've never actually owned a beret because I just find them hard to fit to my hat. They're always too big or they like look really stiff. So when Nastya put out this pattern, I knew I had to apply. Uh, and I made mine in a strand of cotton and then a strand of mohair to give it sort of a fuzzy yet structured look. And I ran out of yarn. <laughs> so I finished it, but it's a little bit too small. It's like a teeny tiny bit too small so that's why I don't wear it I think it's super cute I just wish I had more of the yarn but I've actually told myself to not get new yarn because I have a lot already and I want to use up my stash first so it's a little bit too small we'll see maybe I'll uh, make a border in another color but also I don't want to frog mohair you know so I'll just probably give this to my niece but I wish it would work for me too, because I think it is a really cute pattern. And I think actually I look decent in a beret, which I hadn't expected. So I'm gonna put this in... I'm gonna put it in wearable, because it is wearable, but I'll just give it to my niece. 
I guess. Okay, everyone, last project. Um, can't believe you made it this far. It's been a very long video, or at least I've been filming for a very long time. And this is the Rain Sweater by Surat. And when I saw Janice post this sweater, she made a shrug as well. And she posted the shrug and the sweater. I was obsessed. I was like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. I never make sweaters like this. Like the texture on the sweater is insane. It was the perfect thing for me to pattern test because I learned so much. I made mine in a strand of cotton and a strand of mohair, just like the acorn beret. It's super lightweight, but it still looks, you know, fuzzy and thick. And it's pretty warm still. So I think this is a gorgeous design. I learned a lot along the way. I also messed up a lot along the way. And because I was working with mohair, like frogging mohair, oh my god, just don't get me started. It was horrible. But this is something that I wanted to make because it's so intricate and beautiful. And um, I had an idea that I would wear this a lot to the office. So I'm gonna say it's even office wear. I have one last thing, which is a Christmas present for my father, um, but I'm not done with it. But I'll show you anyway. So I'm making a sweater for my dad, um, and it's a bike graph. It's pretty cool, right? My dad is 60, but he bikes a lot. And he has this thing where every year in the middle of summer, he bikes 100 miles, so 160 kilometers. Uh, back and forth to this no it's I mean it's total 160 kilometers um, to this place in Skåne and I think next year I'm gonna try and join him on that ride maybe I'll just do one way <laughs> to start because 100 miles is quite far but I really admire him for that and of course he goes you know on his white racing bike it's like a vintage um, monarch from the 80s so that's what I'm making him this year for Christmas. He's helping me a lot with um, wedding preparations. So Alex and I are getting married next year. I think you'll also see some of that wedding content on this video as we prepare for our wedding. And my dad is helping me uh, with both the decorations and also with making my dress. So very thankful that he's doing that. So therefore I'm trying to give back <laughs> by making something um, for him as well. So those were all the projects that I had for you today. I'm so excited for you to see my first ever YouTube video. And I also uh, made this tier list public so you can make your own Wool and Buggers 2023 ranking of all the things that I did. If you wanna share it, I'd be happy to know. Um, please let me know in the comments down below which one was your favorite piece. Uh, which pattern you'd want to recreate, which ones you've made already, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!